So we AFK'd here for about 10 minutes. And oh, look at all that honey. We're never going to run out for a long time. And with this, we'll be able to create the shulker breeding farm that we're going to use for the nether and overworld mob switches. What up my roomies and welcome back to the Techno Guide to Minecraft. And today, we're going to be finishing up the nether mob switch. But in order to understand this, we got to understand shulker mechanics. So, welcome to Kikakor, where safety is a concern. And today, we're going to be talking about shulker breeding. Now, the whole premise is with shulker breeding. When a shulker hits itself with its own bullet, there's a chance for it to reproduce when it's below 35% HP. Now, in order for the shulker bullet to start shooting, it has to have something to target. In this case, we have ourselves a snow golem. The snow golem will start shooting snowballs into this shulker. And due to the floor being a wall and the top being a half slab, the shulker bullet won't actually be able to go into this. Thus, the shulker bullet will theoretically move back and hit the shulker. Once the shulker hits itself enough times, it'll begin to reproduce. Okay, let's open up this trap door and observe. Ah, there we go. It left behind a copy of itself, but the original went over here. And so the snow golem observed that the shulker was over here and tried to shoot at it for a little bit. And that's kind of the mechanics that we're going to be using in order to make the shulker breeder. Now the shulker breeder that we're going to be using is a one-dimensional shulker breeder created by Cubic Meter. While I don't personally like using this to create shulker shells, it's really good at making shulkers in general. If you want to know more about this one-dimensional shulker farm, you should go check out Cubic Meter's video in the description below. So this is like the good thing and the bad thing about technical play is that a lot of the things that we make are built on the shoulders of giants. However, people just get the schematics and don't really understand how the mechanics work, which is always important to try to understand how things fundamentally work. And while I could explain how Cubic Meters' shulker farm works, the intricacies and the stuff needed to understand how exactly it does work is better explained by the creator itself. And so please do me a favor and just go check out that video to really understand the inner workings of how this farm works. Now over here we have another portal, and if you go on the other side, you'll see that we land inside this sort of chamber. Now what is this chamber you ask? Well this is the box that's gonna hold all the shulkers. This container can hold up to 400 shulkers. Now that's not gonna be 10, that's gonna be able to support a little under 7 players, but not all 7 players at peak are gonna be in the nether at any given point. Hopefully. This whole container is in one full chunk, maximizing the amount of space that we can use. And so, this is how we're going to make the mob container for the nether. And more or less, it's going to be the same for the overworld, just without the nether portal behind it. And when you break this whole system down to its basic level like this, you can see that while it may seem intimidating, it's really not that hard to make a mob container that's shulker based. So, let's head back to the technical guide world and uh, get to work. So, we're going to go up a little bit just so we can separate ourselves from the bottom. And then we're going to be making the mob container for the nether. So let's get to it. Quick interruption, I noticed that only 12% of you are actually subscribed to this channel. Watching this long, I must be doing something right, so if you like this video, hit that like button and please subscribe to this channel. Any support helps and these videos take a bit long to make. Thank you so much and back to the video. Alright, now that we've made this entire chamber, let's go ahead to the other side and see where we end up. This is not so bad. Top of a jungle? Okay. Let's go to bed real quick here. Might as well get some shut eye. And then we can begin work on the shulker breeder.
Alright, so after a couple of days of building this and a lot of pauses, mostly because this is a kind of a bigger build to do by yourself, I'm going to need to go and heal my elytra real quick. We're going to bring the shulker into position for the shulker breeder. We are starting to run out of iron. <laughs> kind of worried. <laughs> I gotta go make a new iron farm. Now that that's all built up, all we gotta do now is just flick that lever and then go follow this shulker all the way over to the other side. So pick it up. Yeah. All right, let's go follow it. Oh, geez, no. Once we step to the other side, we're gonna need to destroy that portal. Cool. Okay, let's destroy this. The reason why we're destroying this is because when they jump to the other side, they need to jump inside the cage itself. So we need to make sure that this is dismantled. Okay, that's set up. And now let's turn this on and get ourselves a bunch of shelters. Now that the nether side is full, let's make a path to the overworld so that we can do this again and fill up the mob cast. Oh no, a villagers died because of this guy. Oh well, this single container will be able to hold around 560, which will enable eight players to be on the server without having hostile mobs being spawned. And uh, that's probably it. <laughs> Filter block and activate. Okay, good. It now works. As you can see here, we have 420 nice hostile mobs, which is the shulkers up here. And just to double check if it's in the right distance away from the chunk loader, this is one, two, and three. So this is now in the lazy chunk over there from the chunk loader. Let's go back to our base and also clean this up and we'll see if it holds up in the overworld. 
Park. So we're sufficiently far enough away that it's no longer in murder distance and it appears the nether mob switch is still active. So that's good. At least we know that the nether is going to hold up. Okay, we are now a thousand blocks away from the nether mob switch and it's still holding. 422. Okay. Okay, now that we've gotten all that taken care of, it's time for the moment of truth. Before we check the mob cap, just want to say sorry about the delay. I was dealing with some real life stuff, but we're back and let's check it out. 665. We did it. We have successfully made ourselves a mob switch. <laughs> nice. And with this, we'll be able to start some bigger, bigger projects. One last thing to do is create the switch to turn this on and off. So how we're going to do this is to create a T flip flop. And uh, if you remember from the previous episodes, we're going to make an observer based T flip flop. Quickly put that all over on top. And then from here in front of the observer, we're going to use rails in front of the observer instead of dust. That way, when it turns on, it'll activate. So we want to go eight away. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Have an observer in front. And when we put a note block in front, and of course, this isn't going to be distance. Once we hit the note block, we should see that the sticky piston in front will activate. So, and it'll only activate once because the observer is only noticing the change of the note block changing pitch. So it's only one tick. Okay, so let's continue this build. And now this should work. Let's head back to the mob switch and then check if this works. And I'll explain why we built it this way as soon as we confirm it works. Whoop. Ah, it did work. Okay. So the reason why this works is because of render distance. Now, if we open up our chunk borders, so this is one, two, eight, ten. From the moment that we press this to when the observer all the way down there is about 10 chunks or about 196 blocks. And the reason why we want to be this far away is because we want to be as far away from the actual switch itself to reduce lag while also being able to send the signal or rather send the pulse through with the observers using the powered rails. And by doing so, activate the T flip flop to then turn on or off the mob switches for both the nether and the overworld. So right now the mob switch is off and I don't actually have an indicator for that yet. So let me make one real quick. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, yeah, that'll work. So let's double check if this is configured right. Yep, this is configured right, which means that mobs will not be able to spawn or rather hostile mobs won't be able to spawn. And then when we turn it off, the whole thing is now turned off as well because that's set to off. The redstone block is forward, which means that this chunk loader is now disabled. So if we were to fly far away enough, we should see the mob count go down and it did. Brilliant. Okay, so let's turn it back on and just double check if this works. And now it's active. Let's fly away. It's holding. Wonderful. And now that this whole thing is confirmed to now have turned off all the hostile mobs in the nether, let's go ahead and start work on the wither skeleton farm. <laughs> 